What's going on YouTube? This is Ribo back at the kitchen table just due to the weather. I will be back at the bench soon. Uh, today I want to do a head-to-head -head video of these two knives. This is the Benchmade 940 G10 version. Uh, this does have the uh, fold-over wire, uh, sorry, fold-over deep carry clip. I believe you have to contact Benchmade to get this, so this is not how it comes out of the box to my knowledge. Um, and then this is the Spyderco Capara, uh, which is something that was recently loaned in and I was super excited to take a look at. Um, so I'll have a, a full review of this uh, up at some point. So these are two very interesting knives, uh, two very good knives, just to be honest. And I think uh, a lot of people compare the two. They're fairly uh, similar in terms of overall size. Uh, at, the, at the kitchen table, I'm a little bit, um, slanted, so I don't know if you can really tell the overall size, but uh, I'll do some measurements in just a little bit. Um, but fairly similar similar knives, both in S30V, and uh, so I thought maybe it'd be fun to do a head-to-head. -head. Uh, review of the categories real quick, pocket clip scales, overall size, ergonomics, action, detent, blade steel, lock system, and the intangibles category. All right, so uh, first up we have pocket clip. So this is an interesting one. Uh, I'm going to rate these based on how they come out of the box if you were to purchase these retail. And if, if you were to purchase these retail, this comes with a non-fold-over, non-deep carry clip. I will give the advantage to the wire clip. Um, I am a Spyderco wire clip fan. I know that you are typically either a wire clip guy or not. I like them. They tend to win my head-to-heads. Um, however, if I were to rank the two on the table, I would give the advantage to the Benchmade here. I think that this is a fantastic clip. Uh, really, really like it, maybe even more than the wire clip. I think it just functions very, very nicely. I like fold over clips a lot. Um, and I think that this is really, really nice. So if you have a 940, I would definitely suggest contacting Benchmade and getting uh, them to send this clip out. Um, okay, so uh, scales. All right, so you have G10 on this. You can get the 940s in aluminum. Um, uh, this, is, uh, this is the G10. I was really excited to get a G10 version of the 940 because from the pictures, it does very much look like it's a grippy uh, and aggressive texture, which uh, if you watch my channel at all, you know that how something cuts and how it carries are two most important things to me. Um, the next thing would be um, the ergonomics or how well I can hold onto the knife. I think that that does kind of fall into that carry category, but um, the... Um, I don't know. The the purchase on a knife is very, very important to me. And so I tend to like uh, somewhat aggressive G10. It's why I love Spyderco's FRN, the bi-directional texturing. I just think it's very practical. Um, this was something I was very disappointed with on the 940 because I think that the G10 looks fantastic. I think that the kind of... Um, I don't know, shaping that they've, that they've done and the contouring that they've done on the handle is very nice. It's, it, I think it looks good. I think it, you know, feels pretty good in the hand, which is obviously two categories down from what we're talking about now. Um, but the G10 is just super slick. There's absolutely no texture to it. And so that's something I was very, very disappointed with. I mean, uh, from what I've heard, the aluminum ones are actually a little bit grippier. Um, I don't really love aluminum because, uh, you have this kind of painted aluminum or coated aluminum and it's going to wear out, wear off over time. Uh, whereas this one's going to hold up a little bit better. But I was just very disappointed that this did not have something that was a little bit more aggressive, especially given the looks of it. It looks like it's more aggressive until you actually touch it, and it's just super, super smooth. Um, on the uh, Capara here, I am not a carbon fiber guy. I never have been. I do not like the way that carbon fiber looks typically. Um, it, it works out for me because I also don't like to spend hundreds of dollars on knives and typically carbon fiber is the most expensive material, but I have just never ever been a carbon fiber guy. That being said, this is the coolest carbon fiber I've ever seen. I don't know what they're doing with this, but this is just really, really sweet. I love the way it looks. It's not super uniform, which is I think one of the things I don't like about carbon fiber a lot of times is that real uniform look. Um, this is just super, super cool. I hope that the light is catching that. I have a window open over there and it's casting some kind of odd light, but hopefully you can kind of see that. Um, almost like snakeskin carbon fiber. I, I don't know what they call this, but man, that is just really, really sweet. Um, 
I will say in terms of overall function and utility, I think these are about the same. You do have a little bit more contouring here so you can kind of get purchase on the knife. Um, but overall, they're both fairly slick. Um, and so, you know, when it comes down to it, this one might be a hair more aggressive, but I really, really prefer the carbon fiber on the Capara here, which shocks me because again, I am not a carbon fiber guy, but this, that is sweet. Um, overall size. All right, so let's do some quick uh, weight checks and, and whatnot. Uh, let me pull the uh, scale over here. So let's see. So the 940 coming in at 2.7 ounces, which is absolutely fantastic. And the uh, Capara 3.5. Uh, so that is not insignificant. And in terms of overall size, Let's see, let's not do millimeters, let's do inches. So overall blade length, sharpened blade length, you're looking at 3.33 inches sharpened blade length in the pocket. This is not a small knife. This is coming in at 4.7 inches, which is not small at all. And then if you look at the thickness, 0.5 on the dot. All right, uh, on the Benchmade 940, you have an overall sharpened blade length, 3.3, almost identical. And then in the pocket, you're looking at 4.5-ish. Uh, and then in terms of your thickness, uh, let's see, 0.44, so a little bit thinner than the Capara. Um, so I would say they are very, very similar in terms of size and, and especially in terms of the sharpened blade length. Obviously, you're getting a wider blade on the Capara. Um, and, uh, and so overall size, I would say I'd give the advantage clearly to the Benchmade and really it's just the weight factor. Um, I, I think that, um, this is a lot lighter and it also carries a lot better because if you look at this guy in the pocket, um, and this is a classic kind of Spyderco problem. It's one of the, the deals with having, uh, the Spidey hole. Uh, these are just going to be thicker in the pocket, um, than the Benchmade. Uh, you can see the, the 940 just carries like a dream in the pocket. I mean, it, it just really hides away. It's, it's just fantastic. Um, so that is one downside of, of the Capara and in general of kind of spider codes. They do, they are a little bit wider. Um, but this one is also a, a decent bit heavier. I mean, you can see those, um, I believe, full metal uh, liners in there hollowed out a little bit. They, they did some milling on that. But, um, you know, you're, you're going to have a, a much heavier knife right here. Not much heavier, but I mean, it is heavier. Uh, for the size, I, I don't think that this is a bad weight. Uh, but when you compare it to the 940, it's just no contest. All right, uh, ergonomics. Uh, this is an interesting one too. So one of the things that drew me to the 940 uh, was the ergonomics. Uh, I thought I thought it, you know, held very well. Uh, I have semi-large hands, not huge, but not small, and I think that it holds very, very nicely. Um, the one thing is you, you kind of have this. Um, I'm, man, I'm terrible with uh, knife reviews and names. This kind of hilt, whatever you want to call this here, which does kind of force your hand back a little bit further than I would like to be. I really like to be up on a knife for control. Uh, the Capara here has kind of what Spyderco is getting really, really good at, which is this front finger choil and is just super, super ergonomic. You can kind of grip up here, get really, really good handle um, for, you know, bigger cutting tasks. Back here, you have still, um, you know, plenty of material to get all of your fingers on this. Uh, has a very, very nice ramp here. It could have used some jimping maybe, um, but still very, very comfortable uh, to hold. I think the ergonomics on both are good, but if I had to summarize, I would say the 940s is outdated. Uh, it is fine. It is good. It is practical. However, uh, this is just so much better to me. It feels really, really good in the hands, and I would much, much prefer uh, to, to hold on to this. Uh, action detent. So this is another really interesting one. So uh, the Benchmade 940 is really the knife that made me uh, rethink Benchmade. I, I have stayed away for a long time. Um, I am a late bloomer in a lot of things uh, knife related and Benchmade is one of those things. Um, but getting the 940, I was just very, very impressed with the action, uh, the drop shuttiness of it. I have had some issues. Well, that that's me. Sorry. Um, hard to do with the, uh, you know, what do you call the stand uh, back here? Um, but uh, I, I thought that the action was just super, super smooth. Uh, drop shutty. I have had some issues. Uh, my main issue with the 940 has been getting it drop shutty, good action while keeping the blade play down. You can see I still have a little bit of blade play 
I have not been able to get the action drop shutty uh, while uh, not having blade play. If I, if I tighten it up enough, um, then it's not really dropping shut. Um, I've been working on it for a while. I, I know a lot of people get theirs tuned up just right. I just have not had much luck with this one. Um, so uh, the action, I think, is excellent on this. Uh, but the action on the Capara. This is the CQI. Sorry, this is really hard to do on. <laughs> this is really hard to do on camera. So I'm just gonna stop doing it on camera. Um, so the action on the Capara is just beautiful. I mean, this has the new pivot bushing in there um, that is just oh, it's a dream. It, it drops shut very nicely. I'll do it way over here. Flies open. I mean, honestly, the spidey hole here acts like a thumb stud. Um, this is as close to the PM2 as I think I've seen on a Spyderco, at least that's come through me. Um, in terms of the overall ability to deploy the knife, super, super sm uh, smooth, no, not gritty at all. Drop shut. The compression lock is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, drops sh uh, shut just very, very nicely there. Um, and so I, I really, really like that. Um, so for me, there again, and this is kind of the theme of the video, they are both very, very good. The action on both is, is very, very good. Um, the Kapara is just better. I, I like it a lot better. All right, the blade. Um, so continuing the trend here, uh, both of these have very good blades. Obviously, um, you know, I am uh, partial to Spyderco. I have a lot of Spydercos. I am partial to a full flat grind and a kind of a wider blade. This one's a little bit goofy, has this kind of swoop down here that's just aesthetically very interesting. I actually kind of like it. It is funky, but that is kind of what drew me to Spyderco anyway. Um, you have just this very, very nice, uh, you know, wide uh, blade with that full flat grind, uh, just beautiful for cutting tasks and generally EDC. I, I typically like when a knife has some uh, beef to it towards the tip here because I think it just gives it some stability. Uh, I tend to use my knives fairly hard uh, and so that's going to hold up over time. Um, the Benchmade, I think very similar. Uh, it, it has a lot of heft up here, which I really like. It has a beautiful swedge that tapers down uh, not only this way, but also back towards the middle of the blade, which I think is just really, really nicely done. Uh, you have a, I guess, a hollow grind there um, and, uh, you know, a, a very good blade, albeit a lot thinner. Um, I'm going to give the advantage to the Kapara here uh, for a couple reasons. One, uh, the, that nice full flat grind, I think, makes for a very, very good slicer. Um, the Benchmade seems like more of a utility blade, more of kind of an all-purpose um, thing than it is a slicer, although it does slice very, very well. I think this one has an, an edge. Um, but the other reason, and, and maybe, the, uh, maybe this is uh, unfair, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's my channel, my video. Um, the Benchmade has a very, very thin blade and very, very long, which I think uh, means that you get a lot of sharpened blade in a very small, lightweight package, which is awesome, and especially something that's very thin and can be carried. The downside of that to me, and this is just my experience with this knife, is that that produces a tendency for blade play because you have a really, really long blade and you have very, very small amount that's actually hidden behind this handle. If you had more counterbalance on that blade, I think you would have less of a tendency for the blade play. Um, and so I tend to get a decent amount of blade play as this thing loosens up. On the Capara, you have a little bit wider blade. I think you have a little bit more behind the handle, and I haven't had any issues with blade play on this. Obviously, if you were to loosen it all up, but at this point, I've got it drop shutty, and it is not. Uh, there's no no blade play at all, um, and so for those two reasons, kind of overall sliciness, I guess, um, and also the tendency towards blade play based on what I think is the blade design, uh, I give the advantage to the Capara. All right, uh, steel. So you have, uh, let's see if I can get this on camera. So CPM S30V. And do they print theirs? Yeah. S30V. Uh, so I am not a steel nerd. I am and not to disparage anyone who is. I, I uh, envy you. I'm just, I'm not a steel guy. I, my thing is, is functionality, practicality, like, you know, utilitarianism, like what, it, what will work. 
Um, and so I am perfectly happy in certain situations with OS 8, as ridiculous as that may sound, and I am very happy with S30V. Um, I'm kind of all over the place. As long as it functions, it doesn't rust, it does the job, and I can sharpen it up, I'm, I'm pretty much good with it. Um, I don't know enough about the difference between Benchmade and Spyderco and this steel. I've heard really good things about Benchmade. I know I've, some people have complaints about Spydercos, um, but I think that they're both pretty good, and so I don't have enough knowledge to really rate one ahead of the other, so I'm just going to call this a, a draw. All right, so lock system. So you have uh, the famous Benchmade axis lock up here, which is just like this sliding, whoops, sorry, sliding bar lock. Let me see if I can reposition a little bit. Um, so you have this kind of sliding bar lock, uh, which is very fidgety and very nice, uh, very, very smooth, and I like it a lot. And then you have the Spyderco compression lock, which uh, needs no introduction, but this is kind of the uh, wedged liner lock on the back side. I don't, I don't know if that's a good way to describe it if you don't know anything about the compression lock. Um, but uh, the, the benefit of the compression lock, well, there are many. One, it's a very strong lock. The other is that you can drop it shut without your hand in the way. And the Benchmade 940 with the axis lock has the same benefit uh, with the sliding bar lock, which means you can get your hand out of the way. Um, and you're never really in the path of the blade. Plus, as knife guys, it's just super fun to fidget with. Um, I do have a complaint about the, it's really not about the lock on the um, Capara here, but it is about um, how it's used with this particular knife. So the compression lock is right here, uh, and that is on the thinnest part of this handle material. So when I first got this knife in, I really, really struggled with how to close this because you have just really, really small amounts of material to grab onto. Uh, and then you're trying to get one hand off of uh, that material to drop it shut. And it has a tendency to kind of slide around. Um, and if your hands are really dry or something, it, or, or I guess really wet, um, it couldn't slide out of your hand. And so that, that is one thing that, you know, when you look at like the PM2, there's just a lot more material. And you add to that a very slick material here. It does make it a little bit more difficult. Um, sorry, I, again, why, I don't know why I'm trying to deploy this really cool on the camera. It's, I'm having trouble. Um, but uh, it does make it a little bit harder to use. After a couple days, I've gotten the hang of it, and uh, and I don't really have an issue. I can kind of do one of these and drop it shut, um, but I can also uh, typically do this, although that's not super comfortable. Um, the 940, I think, is uh, a little bit easier. It's just, you know, you don't have to think about it quite as much. Um, this one is really tough for me. I, you know, I'm going to actually call this one a draw and I know that's a cheap uh, kind of a cop out, but, uh, if it came down to just the, the lock mechanism between the two, I would go compression lock almost every day. Um, I do like the access lock. I know many people don't, but I really like it. I, I prefer the compression lock here. However, with how it's implemented on this, I do think it's a little bit harder to use. Whereas this one's a little bit simpler. So it's like edge here, then you have edge here and I'm just going to call this one a wash. Uh, clearly, I don't think it really matters with how the the head-to-head uh, -head is going. But uh, for me, they both have drawbacks. They both have benefits. Um, and you can't really go wrong either way. All right, that leaves us with intangibles. And shocker, it's going to be the Kapara. So uh, the Kapara, to me, is just its a very interesting knife. And I really, really like it. I, I wasn't sure in pictures that I was going to like it as much as I do. Um, but I've really, really enjoyed it. Again, I, you know, I was surprised not being a carbon fiber guy um, and, and just not really knowing a ton about this knife, uh, how much I really, really like it. Uh, I really like the Benchmade 940, but I think that the Kapara is almost a level up on the 940. Um, this is a work knife. Uh, a lot of people beat these up over the years. I think that these hold, you know, true to the test of time. Uh, the Kapara to me skates that really nice balance between being a um, nice knife, like a dressy, not dressy knife, but like a, you know, not an art knife. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but like a nice knife and a work knife. It, it has uh, the ability to do both. It is a beautiful knife with really, really nice carbon fiber, that nice red backspacer detail, compression lock, wire clip, just a beautiful blade. It is a very nice looking knife that looks fairly elegant, if I can use that word. Um, however, it is... Uh, perfectly capable of doing everything that the 940 can do and probably a little bit better. Um, I have found myself reaching for this over the 940 and I think um, after having the two side by side, uh, I am much more likely to sell my 940 and try to pick up a Kapara. 
Um, so Capara is the winner here. I think they're both great knives, and I like both of them. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the head-to-head, -head, and I'll see you next time.